Hey there YouTube, welcome to this video about the Fanatec CSL Elite F1 set. Now this is the official racing wheel of Codemasters F1 Games eSports series, and this is the PlayStation 4 version. Now this is the CSL Elite, which means that it's not the club sport top tier of what Fanatec offers. Um, if you can call this entry level, then well, good luck to you because it's still very expensive. Um, but this is the lower end of what Fanatec offers. Having said that, this is actually my favourite of the wheels that I've tried from Fanatec so far, although I did try the Direct Drive one at an event recently, and well, that's pretty special. Uh, but I prefer this one's pedals, and I really like the wheel on this as well, and there's nothing wrong with the quality of the force feedback. Now, full disclosure, I've been lent this by Fanatec, um, so that I can try the new Formula One game with it and a few other games as well. But it still belongs to them. It's not a gift and it's going to go back to them at some point in the near future. So without further ado, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Unlike most Fanatec wheels, this actually comes in a single box. So you get the wheel, the wheelbase and the pedals all in one unit, which is great. Now I'm using my old Game Racer Pro racing seat. This is about 10 years old now, it cost me just under £300 back in the day but uh, it's pretty basic now. It'll do though. The unit comes with screws so that you can attach the pedals at different points on the floor of the base unit, which is great. That means that you can be more comfortable with it. But this unit actually comes with two pedals, not three. So there's no clutch. That's fine for Formula One because you've got the paddle shift on the back of the wheel. That's no problem. But if you did want to get another clutch pedal, then you can add that at a later date. After that, you just put it all together and then you can cover up the exposed screw heads with this little piece of rubber, which obviously attracts dust like nobody's business. I'm sorry about that. But it does mean that everything fits nice and flush. So you've got a good looking unit ready to go. After that, you can attach the clamp, which is included in the box, which is excellent. Uh, you don't get a clamp actually with the club sport versions. And then you can attach that to your racing seat or to a desk or anything you like. After that, you'll see that the wheel itself has got a quick release. That means you can attach it and remove it and throw it out of the cockpit, just like Lewis Hamilton, if you're feeling touchy. But of course, it costs a lot of money, so I wouldn't recommend that. After that, it's just a case of powering on and letting it go through its calibration like this. And then you're ready to play some sim racing. We're going. Oh, wheel spin. Get out of the way! Right, I haven't practiced with this car, there's someone beside me. There we go, give him room. Give him room! Hopefully he'll return the favour. Oh, it's bumpy! I think with No, he's still there. Okay, well, let's stay on the road and tuck back in behind him. I haven't played a Seto Corsa for a long time. Are you going round? No. Now, the advantage of having this force feedback and such a solid steering wheel is that you drive more realistically. You can't just seesaw at the wheel like you would do if you were using a pad and going left, right, left, right, wagging with the stick. It's too wide. Oh, second attempt, here we go. Get some reps at the start. I got too much wheel spin on the first one, so... Well, that was too little power. I feel like I've got the uh, brake pedal nicely spaced out because this particular steering wheel has a central column which really does get in the way sometimes lovely sensation of grip or lack of it. I can really feel the bumps which is awesome but my time is two and a half seconds off the pace. The LEDs that tell you to change gear are really bright. It's really good. There's a real smooth feeling to it even though it's pushing at you and you're pattering over the curbs. Around we go. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of MotoGP 19 recently, as uh, anyone who's been on my channel will have seen. And so uh, having a car, being able to stop for the corners is a revelation. So the wheel itself is really, really comfortable. Like, 
the most comfortable I think I've ever felt because it's slightly soft to the touch. It's kind of a, a suede -y feel here. I don't know if it's actually suede. But uh, the ergonomic design is just superb. I find that the um, paddle shifts are a little small, but of course once you get used to it, that's fine. And they're so chunky, that's wonderful. Really, really nice. Oh, struggling for grip. A lacy says step on it. All right. Well, if a lacy says so, oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, nice little kick around the steer. Oh, it's feisty. I didn't expect it to be so feisty. I thought F1 cars were meant to stick to the road. But this one's, uh, must be because it's Sean Lacey doing it. Down the hill. It's not bad. Oh, 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 oh another slide. Alright, oh, that's nice. Oh, now we're off. Oh. Wow, that was fun. Let's try a different one. Wow, Nikki Lauda's Ferrari. At Imola. Okay, let's do it. Alright, so I've gone with the cockpit cam to get the... Uh, Full experience. You notice that I've switched off the driver's hands because I've got my own hands, my own mouth. I'm going to take it very gently, gingerly to start with because I've no idea what the grip's like in this thing, and there isn't very much grip at all. <laughs> Wow, there's so much drift in this car. So cool, you see that? You've got to treat these old cars with so much respect because they just haven't got the grip that modern ones do. Ah! Oh no! Don't crash it. Don't want to dent Nicky Lauda's car. You really can push it into the corners, get the back to step out, drift it through. And there's the steering going light with the understeer. That's something you just can't recreate with the standard PlayStation controller. That feeling of understeer. I mean, sure, you can, you can stop the vibration, but it's not quite the same as having the steering actually go light in your hands. Yeah, this is really fun. Fun really is the word here, but unfortunately this kind of fun does come at a rather premium price point. Obviously this particular bundle came out last year, so you might be able to find it a bit cheaper now. But even so, it's far more expensive than the likes of Logitech or Thrustmaster, who offer superb force feedback enabled wheels at the mid-tier price range of £300 or so. And obviously that's still rather expensive, but there's nothing wrong with getting that. I think probably you'd see the difference or feel the difference in the pedals between um, Thrustmaster and Logitech coming to Fanatec. You do feel the difference there. And the strength of the force feedback is different and the build quality of the rims that you hold themselves. I mean, just look at this thing. It looks like it just fell off a Formula One car. But interestingly, if you look at the back, you see the pins there. now. A representative from Fanatec, when I spoke to him at that uh, F1 2019 preview event, told me that the number of pins there means that they can send more information to their wheels than the competition can. So that's why you get the uh, digital readout there on the front and also the lights here at the top. Uh, whereas if you were to get a Thrustmaster wheel and wanted to have lights on it, you would have to buy a separate Bluetooth connector and have something attached to your wheel and send the data via Bluetooth because they're PS2 style, and I mean that as in the PC sense of connector, um, the PS2 style pins just haven't got enough data transmission to allow that. 
So you're sort of taking that next step up. Now, obviously, if you're going to get a Fanatec wheel and spend all that money, there's definitely an argument that says perhaps you should go the whole hog and get the club sport one. Well, I do feel that the pedals are absolutely fine in this. Even without the load cell, I find that there's plenty of play on the throttle and I find that there's just the right amount of resistance on the brake pad. So I'm perfectly happy with just having two pedals like that. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't miss the clutch. Obviously, you might miss the clutch, um, but again, you can just buy another clutch pedal when you feel like it and attach that to this base, which is awesome. Uh, as for the rim itself, very interestingly, if you have the PlayStation one like this, but you've bought this bundle, if you just buy an Xbox One rim that you can also play on PC, you can just take this off with the quick release on the back there and then put in the Xbox rim and that will work on this base with these pedals and this um, connector you understand the uh, clamp and so you only need to buy the extra rim and you've got a brilliant wheelbase that works on both consoles so it's just something to keep in mind if you're going to spend a lot of money perhaps on a Thrustmaster for your um, PlayStation and Logitech for your Xbox it might just be worth getting something like this for the PlayStation and then getting an Xbox wheel rim. It's worth just seeing if you want to spend those extra couple of hundred pounds or so. Uh, it could well be more because it does get pricey. And just decide what you want to do. But if your budget is okay to get you into Fanatec range, but still a bit limited, then absolutely this is the one to go for. It's absolutely superb. Well, check out my channel for more racing videos. I've been doing lots on MotoGP recently, if you like two wheels as well as four. But I will be reviewing F1 2019 very soon. And I'll also be reviewing that for official PlayStation Magazine UK. So do check that out if you get the chance. Thanks so much for stopping by. Check out my channel for more videos. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Take it easy. Bye.